Ironically, my neighbor as a kid, just life brings you on a roller coaster and you see people again. So we are going to have Stephanie today and she is the diabetes maven. Um, You can find her on Pinterest and we'll be sure to share all of her links where you can contact her. And just, I guess, in honor of hot girl summer, we're going to talk about staying healthy and healthy snacks, things that are not going to spike your blood sugar and take you in the wrong direction. (laughs) Okay, Stephanie. So tell us about the diabetes maven. Just tell us what your mission business is, your mission, what you're trying to do, how you can help people. Yes. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I started Diabetes Maven not too long ago, actually, as I was trying to figure out how can I help more people as I'm talking to friends and family. And they're just like, what? I didn't know this. I didn't know that. And so as I'm thinking about, okay, what can I bring to the world? And me, I was diagnosed myself with diabetes actually a few years ago, and it runs in my family. And so I just thought, why not call it Diabetes Maven, catering to women, The whole mission is to arm women with tools to conquer diabetes once and for all. And I made sure to include that once and for all, because I think so many people, they think that I had this illness and it's going to be forever. I won't ever get rid of it. I will never be able to eat sugar. I can't Mm -hmm. eat it. And they just feel like their life is over almost. Okay. Yes. I have diabetes too. Okay. I had gestational diabetes, which, I mean, they kind of tell you, like, you're probably going to get it later. Right. Know, when, when you have yes. that. And with that, I controlled it strictly with diet and lifestyle. And then when I was diagnosed with just regular diabetes, I, I could not control it just with that. Yeah. So I do remember feeling, especially the first time, kind of it's like you have to think about food, you know, before you just eat. Right. Like, oh, let's go to wherever, you know, and you just have what you want. And then you have to put some thought into it. Right. Like, okay, I need to have this and I can't do that. And, you know, if I'm going to have a... We don't don't really think about how food affects us. I think especially here in America versus if you go to Europe, right, there are a lot more regulations. And I remember being in college and eating certain foods and I would feel very shaky after. And I knew inherently because I was in nursing school, I'm a nurse practitioner. And I remember thinking, okay, this is my blood sugar that spiked and now it's really low. Although I didn't have diabetes at that time, I knew inherently that eventually my pancreas is going to conk out if I keep (laughs) eating like that. (laughs) Right, right. But did I do something about it? No, I did not. (laughs) Well, that's American. That's just American eating for you, honestly. It is. And it's uh, (laughs) there are actually 37 million people in America have diabetes, and about one in five don't even know that they have it. And And many more have pre diabetes, right? I would imagine, yeah. Even more have pre diabetes. And for me, it was a wake up call, especially for this year, for me to really start paying attention to my health because I went to my OBGYN or gynecologist and she's the one that actually discovered that I had a high insulin because a few years before that, I felt really dizzy and my nails were really brittle. My hair was falling out and I was like, what is wrong with me? So I go and I had anemia, but it led to other blood work that she saw that, hey, you have something that looks like PCOS. And okay. I've, always, I've always suspected that I had PCOS. And for those that don't know, it's um, polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, usually people have problems having um, babies and they have acne and they're very hairy. 
Um, so I had all of that except problems having babies. So I just never thought that I had PCOS and no one's ever looked at me and said, yeah, you look like you have PCOS, right? Um, and so at that moment, I thought, okay, I have to do something about this. This is something that I feel like God gave me a, a window into my metabolism and my hormones to say, hey, this is crucial. You need to do something about it. And so from that point, I started doing a lot of research about insulin resistance, PCOS, diabetes, and I stumbled upon the obesity code and diabetes code. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Dr. Fung, but it was a whole, it's a whole movement. And okay. An excellent. So is book. it a code to break it or like, yes. what does that mean? Okay. That was the first time that I actually heard diabetes reversal. And even still, it's a controversial word in the medical community because it's like you can't reverse diabetes and but what is the code can you kind of in layman's yeah, so for him dr <laughs> fung specifically dr fung really talks about um fasting okay okay and so if you have diabetes if you have pcos all of those things are hormonal right you have a high rate of insulin and when you have lots of insulin hanging around in your blood it, it can't get into the cells. It can't do what it's supposed to do in the cells. So insulin really acts like a key. Okay. It, when you eat something, um, your food gets broken down to sugar and insulin opens that cell door so that glucose can go into the cell and do whatever cells do, brain, heart, all of that. And if for some reason the signal is distorted, insulin starts raising and it's high in your blood. Glucose is also high in your blood. Nothing's doing anything. And so his theory is that if you fast for sometimes it's 12, 14, 16 hours a day, then your body is forced into using the storage that you already have on board, the fat storage, the glucose storage, all of that. And so that's where you get into the ketogenic diet. He doesn't call it keto because, you know, that's a buzzword and keto has a whole a <laughs> whole issue of problems too. But essentially you're basically moving your body into a, a temporary starvation mode, right? So, okay, fat, what does that look like? So 12 I mean, hours, that would mean like if you stop eating at seven, you don't mm -hmm. eat again till seven. The next Exactly. Okay. And you really have to play around with it. And so that's when I first started like, okay, I'm going to try this fasting thing. And I can tell you that it was very hard. You know, you don't think about, hey, I'm going to eat at Hey, I'm going to eat, especially in America. We can go to our kitchen and just get food. Right. And so we're kind of eating when we want to eat. And you don't really take note of the time that you're eating, the time frame between your meals. And so it's just like we're always really full. You're, you don't ever allow your body to really that is true. Use, use the fat that's already stored or the glucose that's already stored. And if you think about hunter gatherers, right, when they actually had to go and hunt their food, they had some time in between because they're not just going to a fridge or the pantry to eat their food, right? Yeah, and, and they're burning so, calories to obtain their food. Exactly. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And so for me, I just started saying, okay, I'm going to stop eating around 7 or 8 p.m. and then delay breakfast. You know, you have to be careful with fasting because if you fast for too long, then it does set your body into a starvation mode and they start holding on to fat. Your body is very smart that way. God created our body exactly how it's supposed to function. And so um, you really have to kind of play around with it. Um, for me, the later that you eat, the more insulin is actually going to be produced. Mm. And I don't know if you've heard people like, oh, you should eat a high, like really your lunchtime meal should be your fattiest meal. Should be, if you're going to eat carbs that day, pick lunchtime. Because the later in the day that you're eating carbs, your body is more apt to hold on to that even more. That makes sense. That does. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I do I do stop eating. Like dinner is it for me. Like mm -hmm. I have dinner and um, I, ha I usually do have a little something sweet, like a protein bar, not right. like real sweet, right. but yeah. know, <laughs> it satisfies or, or a piece of fruit or something, you know, and then I'm done. But, you know, you wake up hungry. I do. You do wake up hungry. <laughs> Yeah. when you do that which I guess you know, but if you think about snacking. it you need to because she's right that we don't usually during the day at least we don't get to true hunger no yeah and I never thought about that that's so yeah. interesting it is well I so I go 12 I'm gonna try the 14 I am I'm too gonna try to 
And sometimes it's a whole community and they actually do 24 hour fast. They do 48 hour fast, but it's not every day that you're doing that, but it's a whole science. And it's just so interesting. If you really think about the science of fasting and giving our body a break so that it can kind of reset and use what's on board. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I have lots of insulin on board. I need to get rid of it. How am I going to get rid of that insulin? I'm going to fast and also exercise is a huge part of it. Um, so so. B- beside the fasting, mm-hmm. what is a tip, like some kind of a nutritional tip that you can just give our listeners to help them manage their blood sugar levels? Like, is there maybe like a snack or a, um, just, just give us a tip. I don't, I don't really know. Just, just tell us something that you found is helpful in terms of nutrition. The most important thing I would tell anyone that has diabetes around your eating, it's going to be important to incorporate protein with every single meal. I would even advocate for every snack that you eat. So protein really helps stabilize your your blood sugar because it's going to take a lot longer to digest. And so I've give also... Us, give us some... What are some protein-heavy foods that you recommend? So I am a big fan of nuts. Okay. Almonds, walnuts, trail mix are really good, but you just have to find one that's low sugar because a lot of them have the fruit that's you know dipped in sugar. <laughs> so right. you have to be careful. Or even dried fruit is kind of sugar right yeah. you know it doesn't have sugar in it but it is it somehow sugary. sugary yeah yeah it's super sugary so you have to be careful with that but they also have so many good snacks and i just find things that are it says keto on it um and you can just look at the ingredients so there are some really good keto snacks that i get from costco and they come individually packaged and they have little pieces of dried hydrated cheese in there and nuts and they're so good and so I just kind of carry those around. String cheese is really good. Okay. Um, that's my go-to. So whenever I feel hungry in between meals, I'm like, okay, I'm going to eat protein first, as opposed to like I used to. And I say used to, this was back in December, right? This is very recent when I'm really paying attention <laughs> to what I'm eating. Um like, uh, you know, you say all these little snacks that you get for your kids or granola bars and all of that good stuff. They have lots of sugar in there, unfortunately. Yes. So yeah. anything that you can pair with, if you want to eat that, that's fine, but maybe pair it with protein and that will help as well. If you just eat something sugary by itself and it's going to spike. That's but a good tip. That with, is a good so tip. That is. is. Coupling that with protein. Even our snacks make it protein too. heavy. And then with our meals... Do you suggest the same thing, like have a lot of protein in the meal? Yes, you definitely want more protein and complex carbs. And when I say complex carbs, those are going to be your broccoli, right? Bell pepper, all of those good things. Carrots and corn are not really, they're going to be more starchy. So they're going to affect your blood sugar more so than broccoli would be. Um Things like that. So you want to make sure. Those are good tips. Those are great tips. So is it true? This is just my little, I'm curious. So Mm -hmm. I try to avoid heavy starches sometimes because doesn't that just break down and turn into sugar or is that not true? That is absolutely true. So everything that we eat really ends up being used as glucose. Everything. Okay. And I think that's, um, a lot of people may not understand that, but simple, you have simple carbohydrates and then complex. So potato, for instance, is going to be broken down a lot faster than a sweet potato, right? Because it has, it just depends on the carbohydrates and the complexity of it. Um, But the lower, the more fiber that it has, like the broccoli, it's going to be broken down a lot slower because it has more fiber. So your body is just going to, you know, if that makes sense, just work on it harder than it does a simple protein. Like if you just drink a, a soda, for instance, right? You're just drinking straight <laughs> sugary water. Yeah, oh, that's really so what, what it is. So, what, so you, you don't really have to work hard to break good, that down. What's a good carb? A good carb. Oh, yeah. Give us three good have. carbs, actually. So sweet potato, we know is one. What's a, what's a couple others? Okay. Well, you can do 
Quinoa is another one. It is carbs, yes. but it's a good, <laughs> it's a good carb. Lisa doesn't like quinoa, but I love it. I like one quinoa I'm going to make it recipe. for you. <laughs> um, what's the name of that? Re- is it Start? I don't you know. You know that recipe? I mean, that, uh, I just that like restaurant quinoa. Start, I believe it is. Oh. In East Dallas. Maybe they're not there anymore. I don't know. Well, they have a quinoa salad and I that I have the recipe I'm for. I'm going to make you some quinoa really good. and see if you like it. But uh, <laughs> just quinoa is not my jam. But you like brown rice. I mean, I, I don't it's hate terrible. it. It's terrible. It needs just a lot. Brown Which rice, rice is, does brown too. Rice, no, no. Brown, white okay. rice is amazing. It's terrible for me. Brown rice is the devil. Really? I hate <laughs> it. I don't like brown rice at all. Ooh. I prefer mm-hmm. it. But yeah, I love quinoa. I, like, I don't <laughs> like brown rice either. And I have to be honest, quinoa is not like something I'd be like, yeah, I'm so I'm craving quinoa, you know. But really? no, I'm not gonna crave it. But I do. I use it. Oh, I use it instead of this recipe. Oh, no. It's it's a quinoa salad with broccoli and tomato and onion and feta and like a vi- real lemony vinaigrette and okay. it's amazing. So yeah, and just for any for our listeners cuz I can think of three listeners that comment that they're going to love this episode because like low sugar has been something they've commented on our post before. We're going to post the books. I'm going to post a link to find her um if you go to our pink pal there'll be links to get to Stephanie and all of her information cuz that that'll be the pink pal um July which how how are we already here? This year's passing so fast. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have what, sweet potatoes, quinoa, quinoa, and we need one more. Brown rice. You is can that- actually, yeah, brown rice is another one. There's so many different ones. You just have to think about white bread versus whole wheat, right? You're gonna go for the whole wheat bread as opposed to the white bread because it's gonna take longer for your body to process that. So the longer It takes your body to process it. The less ingredients that it has, the better for you. And I will never be, that's another reason why I started Diabetes Maven, because I think a lot of people, they just think I can't ever eat carbs. I can't even even eat sugar ever. And I'm with the mindset that you can incorporate any of your favorite foods, but you just have to know that you can't eat it every single day. You can't eat it for every meal. Yes. And I think I had to come to that realization, you know, like, okay, if I'm eating Chick-fil-A several times a week and it's fried and my body didn't really like it either, I didn't feel good. I felt sluggish afterwards. You have to start making some changes and just looking at the ingredients and paying attention is half the battle. Yeah, absolutely. If you can get less ingredients, it's going to be more whole. And your body is going to like it and you're going to have more energy. Total sense. That does. Now, what about exercise? Is there a specific type of exercise that you recommend or that's more beneficial for somebody with diabetes or trying to manage blood sugar or any exercise? Or or what do you, what are your- Yes, any type of exercise is going to be great. Any one that actually gets your heart rate up and you're sweating a little bit. I have- my favorite apps that I use, Peloton and another one called Hit, which is, you know, the high oh, intensity yeah. interval training burn. It's, it's an app. And I can only tolerate 30 minutes of exercise at a time. Like I'm not ever going to be one of these people that are exercising for an hour. I have a hard time doing classes because they last an hour. And I'm like, I, I have things to do. <laughs> I don't have time to be exercising. All day. <laughs> and I think that if you really incorporate even if it's 10 minutes, even after you eat every, if you, if you commit to doing 10 minutes a day, your body will thank you. And not only will you enjoy that, you'll want to do more because the more that you exercise, you're burning the insulin, you're burning fat and you're burning sugar. So if you eat that meal, like if you say, I'm going to go out to a Mexican food restaurant this Friday, I know that I'm going to do that. And I'm going to have salsa. I'm going to have chips. I'm going to have enchiladas. It's going to be greasy. It's going to be good. Go for a walk afterwards and you will feel so much better as yeah. opposed to going home and sitting and watching TV. If you just commit to 10 to 15 minute walk after especially a high carb meal, you're helping your body burn what you just ate a little bit, right? Okay. So it's not building up. I'm going to say, I know sometimes I struggle with remembering, oh, what about this app or what about that app? And if you 
if you're listening to us, then you probably have Instagram. You probably have all of that. A great person who has all levels. Actually, Lisa probably has a recommend on this one as well. But I love Grow with Joe. Grow no. with Joe has all levels. Yoga. No, 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 no. Oh. That's my, she does, she oh, has okay. some hit workouts. She has some stretching, some yoga. She has low intensity. She has um, like, if you had need to do chair exercise, she just has all of them. Everything. She's always not overly, like not that fake positive, but she just, <laughs> she radiates as really real. They're easy to follow. And most of them are 30 minutes or less. Yes. And I, so I, I like her. I love Lucy Wyndham Reed. Yes, that's her name. And she's on Instagram and TikTok and she has a YouTube channel and she has everything from like three minutes to 30 something, you know, and that's what I love about her, you know, because there's some days you're so busy, you it, mm-hmm. you find it hard to squeeze it in. Yeah. So my feeling is, okay, I, I just have five minutes, but really with exercise, consistency is the key. I agree. Not so much yes. intensity. So you will, no- I've noticed a change in my body, just doing it every day, yeah. just doing something every mm-hmm. day. And I've done it a few years with her now. I love it. She's got great she has thousands. Th- oh my gosh. Thousands. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, she targets things, you know, you can do arms, legs, you know, waist, right. whatever. Yeah. So um, she's a good one. She does even indoor walking, which is yes. kind of cool. So does okay. So walking is my jam. Mm-hmm. For some of the listeners, I may find a before f- photo, y'all. This was the only time I was not photogenic. So I wrestled in high school, which most of you know if you've listened for any amount of time. I was the first female wrestler for Dallas Independent School District, which is huge. It's a huge district. So I was in the shape of my life. I've always been really active. I went to college, dated someone I certainly should not have, really abusive relationship, and I got up to 308 pounds. I remember not feeling well. I went to the doctor, and you have to step on the scale, and I just remember everything blurring. I thought, this is, Im- this is impossible. Like, what do you mean? I can, I can run seven miles. I've wrestled. I've went to state. But it was, it was real, and I lost weight by just walking. Oh, yeah. Everybody kept, what did you do? I was like, I couldn't do anything. Like, everything hurt. I just... Yeah. Put on headphones. That was yeah. back when you had you MP3 players. Equipment. No you one has need, those anymore. But <laughs> yeah, go. I just walked. And so she has a uh, Grow With Joe has really good indoor walking. Both um, of those. Do. Yeah, they both, both do. Of those do. So, so that's a, if people like that, that's cool. Yeah, that's my and appeal. Lucy Wyndham Reed is from England. So she does a lot of walking, like sightseeing. Type, yes, she uh, does. Which is so cool. Like she's in Paris. She's in Rome. She's in wherever. Yes. And so you get to see everything. She's walking and you walk with her. And that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, there's just so now, many good things. I think the main takeaway is just find something that you're interested in. Walking is highly underrated and it's one of the best things because you're, you know, it's easy to do. You can walk your dogs 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then also weights incorporating those weights are going to be really important because when you build muscle, your body actually uses more insulin and glucose with that. Oh, that's a good tip. Okay. That just blew my mind. Yeah. I didn't know that. I I did know that. Okay. Stephanie, Mm -hmm. there's in the news lately, we've heard all about Ozempic and Rebelsis in terms of weight loss and dealing with blood sugar levels. What's your take on it? Is it, does it work? Is everybody a candidate for it? What do you feel about it? I am super excited about these medications. And full disclosure, I I have used three of those medicines. And I started off doing Ozempic on this program last year. And I I was so excited. I was like, yes, I'm going to be smaller. I'm going to lose my weight. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. And I'm like, why is everyone else having success and I am not, right? And I purposefully only did the medicine and did not change my diet on purpose because I wanted to see, is this going to work for me? And it didn't. Then I switched to Wagovi. And that's when I first started seeing some weight, very small, come off. And then insurance wouldn't pay for it anymore because they preferred Ozempic and whatever. You know, the whole insurance is a whole nother podcast story. But sure is. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, so then I stopped Wagovi and then I was like, you know what? It's going to be up to me to do the changes that I'm going to have to make. And then I went on vacation last year and I just threw all caution to the wind and did whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> and I gained some weight and I'm like, I actually, my hormones were so dysregulated. I also, I started not having a cycle. And I'm like, oh my gosh, am I going through menopause? What's happening? And then I go to my doctor and she was like, didn't you know that if your blood sugars are crazy, that your menstruation is going to be affected? I had no idea. I didn't know that. Okay. This is, this is going to help a lot of people because I'm, I'm thinking of two people specifically that have always had trouble with having a regular cycle, Mm -hmm. but their blood sugar is Bana- like it's just up, yeah. down, and all over the place, and maybe that's why. Wow. That could be why. And so I had no idea. Here I am, a nurse practitioner. Okay, I'm like I I didn't know this. Why isn't anyone talking about this? And so then they put me on birth control pills to try to regulate. I'm like I don't like birth control pills. I don't want to be on this. And so when I went up to my my next follow up appointment, I actually saw the doctor as opposed to the nurse practitioner. Again, nothing wrong with that. She just doesn't know me like my doctor does because I've always seen my doctor. And she yelled at me. She was like, You need to do this. And I, I was offended at first. I was like, Oh my gosh, she's yelling at me, you know? <laughs> but then that's exactly what I needed to say, Okay, enough is enough. I need to get serious about this. Mm. Even though we don't feel like, You know, when you're sick, you have a cold, you have a sinus infection, you feel it. With diabetes, you don't necessarily feel anything, but your organs are being damaged every time your blood sugars are out of whack. And that's something for me, especially seeing my dad lose a couple of toes. He lost his eyesight a little bit. I'm like, okay, I need to take this seriously. So that's when I really started. People, yeah. So many people. It's it's a serious. It, it is, and game. you know, I think by the time you feel stuff, I always tell. I mean, totally different, totally different medical field, but I tell my clients once you feel sick, you're not sitting in front of me anymore because I I really yeah. can't help you. You're going right. to be in the ER. You're going to be with a specialist. You're going to be in our building. You're going to be downstairs. Mm-hmm. You yeah. don't want to be downstairs because right. once you're downstairs, I, I can't help you. Level. I can't do anything yeah. for you. So yeah, I think it's highly important. I know my husband and I have, we've decided we have to get really serious. I think what's played in my favor is I've always been very, very strong. So I've always had a lot of muscle, but having four pregnancies in five and a half, six years, I don't. It's It I, changes. I, it changed <laughs> everything. Changed. And so I was like, oh, I have to like really work to lose this weight now. This yeah. is not a game. So I drink a ton of water. I don't know how, but my blood sugar, just honestly, the grace of God, my blood sugar stays really good, but my husband's is not. Mm, yeah. And I'm like, you need to quit playing with this. You better. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing. It's nothing to play with. It's a serious thing. It's serious. It's and so happening. actually in January, I started on Manjaro because I'm and, like, okay. it's working for you. And it has worked. It has okay. really, really worked. And I will go for my follow-up A1C. But I, you know, in our minds, I think for me specifically, I'm one of those people that are like, no, I'm not taking medication for anything. I'm going to do it on my own. And even for so long, I didn't want to take metformin because I was at that time pre-diabetic and she was like, well, this is how we kind of treat PCOS. And I'm like, well, I don't want to take it. I want to just try it on my own. And that didn't really help. And I think we just have to go ahead and get the support that we need. We still have to eat healthy. We still have to exercise. The medication's not a, you know, a savior by any stretch of the imagination. It's just something that's their tool to help. It gives you a jump start. And I think once you Mm -hmm. see the weight start coming off and you feel better, it motivates you to do better. Now I'll be honest. That's why I want it. Right. Yeah. So I, I think for a lot of people. No, that was my, that was my only thing. My joints just, and part of that is all of your joints spreading to give birth to babies, you know, back for me, back to back to back. It, it's a lot. And I thought I need to do this to lose some weight to help my joints. And then yeah. like, I'm done because I actually do like working out. I'm one of those weird people that <laughs> an hour and a half later, I'm like, I guess I'm going to go see my family. Now. But for those that don't like me, that's where the the five minutes, the three minutes, yeah. the 10 minutes. It helps you build up. Yeah. And you can 
put a couple of them together. There, there's it's there's so many varieties and things you can do. So both of those, um, we'll link we both will. of those sites. We will link all of Stephanie's info. And so next week, you guys, well, this week, if you're listening to this, it's this week. Pay attention to our Instagram. We'll have recipes and links and, and tips that Stephanie's given us. And we'll have a diabetic week. But up next, our picks for the sexiest man alive this week. But first, a message from our sponsor. During hard times, it can get really difficult if you don't have anyone to talk to. Being alone with your thoughts can be an isolating feeling that can allow negativity to consume you. This is why we are sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. So many people use BetterHelp that they are currently recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash free for coffee. That's betterhelp.com slash free for coffee. Okay, so are we letting guests go first or how are we doing this? Stephanie, do you have a sexiest man alive this week? Or yes, I would, about it? I would have to choose Matthew McConaughey. Oh, Ooh, yeah. my kind of girl. I almost <laughs> picked him today. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah. He has been. He's, he has a he has a reoccurring role in my fantasies. <laughs> Was he your your number one? Usually, that's your crush. Yes, I mean I have a few, but I think you know he he wins Texas. His accent, of course. Yeah. You can't go yeah. wrong with Matthew. Can't go wrong. <laughs> it's impossible. Okay, Lisa, who do you have? Well, I have one. We've picked him before, but I'm picking him again because he has a new series on Apple TV, okay. which is Idris Elba, mm. and the series is Hijack, which is kind of intense. I thought it was a movie, so I turned it on yesterday like, oh, it's probably oh, know, and it's 90 a series. minutes, but it's a series. But it's it's very intense and kind of suspenseful, and he's always sexy. This is how you know it's fiction. In this series, I'm not giving this away. This is the first episode. (laughs) The wife is with somebody else. So we know that's fiction, right? Girl, okay. Like she has, we don't know the circumstances, but he's been dumped. Still. And she has a new guy that really is not that cute at all. (laughs) And so I'm thinking, yeah, this is like This is fake. This is fake. Yeah. But I'm enjoying it. So your Apple TV made me switch my Sexiest Man Alive. Because I started a show, guys, when I do paperwork, that's the only time I watch TV because it plays in the background for me. But I love Seth Rogen and I've loved him forever. Oh, Kennedy, Platonic. Platonic, yes. Kennedy told me. I love Seth Rogen. And I saw one episode. It's not what you think. Okay. It is not. It's it. I, I couldn't kind of get into. I thought it, it was going to be all back. fluff. She told me to go back. Yeah, it's good. Okay. It's good. So Seth Rogen is my sexiest man alive, and I don't know if I've picked him. No, we have picked him. Well, he's been there in he real life. A, he is a cutie. I love him. He is Apple TV is the jam, y'all. It's doing really good. It is Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso trying platonic. I mean, shrinking. Um, shrinking was amazing. Yes, so we've many, pulled some so sexiest man alive from him. Yes. 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 Apple TV is hitting, if guys. You don't have, if you have an Apple phone, just FYI, y'all, if you have an Apple phone, you have Apple TV. They yes. give it to you free yes. for <laughs> like at least a I think year, it's a I year think. or two. So check. Yeah. And it's only like $3.99 a month, I think, if not. And okay, I have let's... to add to your list really fast. You can't yeah. sleep on this comedian. His name is Matt Rife. 
He's not well known, but he's hilarious and he's pretty handsome. What's his last name? Matt Wright. Right. Uh, Rife. R I F E. Look him up. Oh, okay. Hello, Matt. I've never heard We're of gonna him. Find you. We're going to find you. We're going to find him. And we like laughs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He may be my sexiest. <laughs> Next week. Next week. <laughs> okay, loves. Thank you for pulling up a chair and joining us for coffee. Please subscribe to Are You Free for Coffee podcast wherever you are listening. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode, learn something new, and find joy in the little things. Until next time. <laughs>